Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter, and today I'm going to show you how to make a shaker window for your cards or tags or scrapbook pages. Um, this is one that I just made for a sketch challenge from Oriental Stamp Art, and it's very easy to do, and I actually um, had posted a shaker birthday tag on my blog and someone had asked me to do a tutorial so um, I decided I would but I came up with an easier way to do it so all the better. Uh, first thing you want to do is um, you know gather your supplies and I like to use for my um, shaker windows to you need to kind of like pop it up a little bit uh, so you have room for glitter and beads and stuff to wiggle around in there. I like to use either foam tape you know the double-sided foam tape you can get at the hardware store or I found that I could use fun foam. So what I did was I got some fun foam and I used my Xyron to put adhesive on both sides. Here's where I already cut some little windows out of. So I ran it through my um, Xyron twice so I could put sticky on both sides. And then I took some nesting circles dies that I had. These are lifestyle crafts, but you might have nestabilities or, you know, the old Sizzix thick ones, whatever you have. Um, these thin ones are nice because I could line up every other one and get these concentric rings, which will cut out um, little windows like this that I can pop apart. And I'm just going to show you how I did that with my Big Shot. Um, these really thin dies, like your Spellbinders or your lifestyle craft dies, they are uh, much thinner then your like sizzlets so you do need to add a spacer and what I'm using is just a sheet of red rubber and a little the brochure for my Xyron machine is just like the perfect thickness you may need to experiment a little bit when you're using the thin dies like that when I use my cherry Lynn doily dies I also have to use that same sandwich um, if you have another die cutting machine uh, I'm sure the sandwich will be, di be different I'm just gonna crank this through and the camera will probably jiggle so I apologize and I find that if I go through once and then I crank it back through, that usually does the trick. And by putting a piece of blue painter's tape over my dies, it keeps them from moving while they're going through the machine. And I can look over, I can flip it over, and I can see that that cut through very nicely. And I can just pop those apart. Now, another quick tip I want to share with you. I don't have many of the dies that are um, the really thin ones because I like to buy dies that I can cut all different materials with. And these pretty much just cut thin stuff. Like, uh, they obviously will cut foam, but they're, you know, more designed for paper and, and whatnot. So I tend to not have too many of these dies, but for the few that I have, I store them in a little 6x6 six six photo album that I got at the dollar store. And there you can see those, I got those for like 10 bucks at the stamp show, I couldn't believe it. Um, I store them right on little sheets of magnet, and they go right in the sleeves of the 6x6 six six photo book, so it works out very well. And I'm just going to pull these off my die and set them aside and then I'll put my um, metal dies back on their magnet sheet so I don't lose them. That's another thing that I'm worried about with these dies is that I'm going to misplace them because they're so tiny and thin and they would just slide behind something or fall on the floor and get tucked under a rug and I wouldn't notice they were missing. So those will go right back on my storage panel like so. And then you can keep it in order, it makes it very easy to do these little concentric circle. So when somebody asked me to do a tutorial, I decided that I would um, I would try this. The other thing is, it's really cool, is that you could take the scraps, like these little, um, like the leftover pieces here, and I could cut that up and make pop dots out of it. The other cool thing, and that tip isn't for me, that was one of the ladies on the um, Split Coast Stampers thread, ways to make do instead of buying new. Um, she said, I can't, oh my gosh, I'll have to go back and get a credit for who said that, but they make their own pop dots that way. And you could make them in any color of the rainbow, which is just awesome. All right, so anyways, I'm just going to put these back a little caref more carefully um, when I'm not on camera because that's boring to watch. All right, so I've got my little window spacers that I've made, and I'm going to want this one right here. I think that's both the right size for the window that I've cut, and I'm just going to make this very simple card. I've got a piece of basic gray paper. I'm telling you what, I love that coat. A Kosheki line that they have. It's a very Asian line. It came out a few years ago. It's gorgeous. And I've used every single scrap of paper from that pad. It's really, really pretty. I even have some full sheets that I bought that I just, I have such a hard time cutting into, but they're so pretty. I'm using a rock block because um, I don't like to waste paper, and I do find I get better impressions when I use a rocking uh, stamp mount. The stamp is by About Our Accents. They have a whole um, set of kind of like um, soap ads, Japanese soap ads, and that's what that is from. So I'm going to set my window on here and pretty much figure out where I want to put 
where I want the um, shaker to be because I want to make sure I have something pretty behind there. And I'm going to use this little uh, butterfly stamp and I'm going to ink it up in pink and purple. And what I do first is I ink it up with a pink and then I'm going to do the edges in purple so I get a little bit of a two-tone. You always do your lighter color first and use colors that um, are close on the color wheel so you don't end up with a muddy ink pad. Alright, I might even be able to stamp right over that, but I don't want to risk ruining my card background, so I'm just going to rock that on, and that's turned out very well. And I just want to stamp a little happy birthday, because I have a lot of family birthdays in August, and I just want to make sure that I have a nice stash of cards ready to go. And I'm just going to eyeball that there. Okay, that looks good. And this is one of my stamps mounted on a Jenga block. I know I've shared that tip before, but I think it bears repeating because it's uh, such a cheap way to mount your stamps. All right, now I'm going to take off one of the adhesives, one of the backing sheets. So I, I told you a few months ago I won that um, Zyron Creatopia from my craft channel, and it's taken me a while to get used to it, but I do like the adhesive um, thingies that you can crank your adhesive through. It's kind of cool. I don't know what you call them. But um, cartridges, yeah, there's the word. Cartridges of adhesive. So that's what I was using there. Um, and they, I know they make other machines that do that. So you may even have one, a little sticker maker or something you can do that with. Now before I take off this backing part, we're going to play with microbeads again. Wasn't that fun last time? And I spilled like an entire container of it. Anyway, I'm very carefully today going to just scrape a few microbeads onto my um, into my little window here. And I'm using microbeads instead of seed beads because this uh, fun foam is quite thin, so I don't want the seed beads to get stuck. I want them to wiggle around good. And here's some doodlebug glitter. It's um, little round circles of glitter rather than um, random flakes. It's very pretty. You don't need too much of it. Um, it's almost like a sequin waste type of glitter, like the middle of the sequins. It's very pretty, very round. Now when I take off this backing, it's probably going to, uh, a few of the beads and glitters will get stuck to it, but it's not a big deal because they are so fine. See, it, it's like the static attracts them or something. I don't think you can do it without any getting attached. That's why you, you put a little extra in. I might even have to put a little extra in, but I'm going to just take a pinch. There. And then I've cut a little window sheet, and you can cut it with the same dies, but I like my Creative Memory Circle Cutter for this. It seems to just be quite easy to work with. And I made it a little bit smaller than the outside of the window so I don't have to put extra adhesive down when I want to put my little frame on top. And I just want to position it so I can't see any of the black foam. There. Now, when I shake that around, we've got our little shaker. Now I will finish the card. If you're, if all you wanted to see in this video was how to make the shaker, you can shut the video off right now, but if you want to see how the rest of the card goes together, then you can um, keep watching. It won't be too much longer. I'm just going to tie myself a little bow. A lot of times, here's another tip, I will um, tie my bow while the ribbon is still on the spool, so that way it just saves a little bit of ribbon. It's, you know, it's not a huge savings, but you know, when you come to the end of the spool, if you got an extra card or two out of it, then, you know, it's, why waste it if you don't have to, right? All right, I'm just going to tie this bow here. I'm using some Hug Snug. They had it on sale at SoTrue.com. They had some discontinued colors on sale, and it was cheap. It was like four bucks for a hundred yards, and I figured, well, I could wrap presents with it for that price, but it's it does tie lovely, and I can wet it and crinkle it if I want to. So, I mean, I just love the seam binding. It's very popular right now. Um, I always get mine from SoTrue.com because they have um, free shipping coupons all the time on any size order, so if you sign up for their emails, you will get those nifty coupons. Alright, now I'm just going to put some double-sided tape on the back, because I don't use, really I don't use fancy adhesives, I won that Zyron machine, and um, I mean, that's great for putting the adhesive on my foam there so I can make my own pop dots and um, shaker box windows. And if you're doing a square, you could just use a foam tape. You don't have to die cut it. You could cut it by hand. It's, you know, there's absolutely no reason you have to use a fancy machine. But if you have it, then why not? Use it. Give it some use. All right. And the uh, little edge punch I used there, I didn't punch it on camera because my table wiggles a lot when I do any punching. But it's just this, you know, Stampin' Up! punch. I think you can buy it in their catalog. I got it on Celebration a couple years ago. Um, I use it all the time. But it's like the only border punch I own, so... It's, it's a good punch, you know, don't get me wrong. All right, so, 
tape this onto the card base, which is just a craft card base from AC Moore, one of those value packs that go on sale every couple of months. I like that. I like the craft base. It seems to go with everything. It's a little different than white, but it's still light enough that you can write on it. And center that in. And just for a little touch of sparkle, I'm going to use my homemade blue dots, which I made by squeezing little drops of Aileen's Tacket onto a just a piece of um, wax paper. And then I let it dry, and then, you know, you get these wonderful blue dots, whatever size you want. And I'm going to use some of these little, um, I don't know what you call them, floral discs. You can get them at, like, Michael's or Joann's or cheaper at Michael's. And I used a coupon, so you get, like, a zillion of these things for a couple bucks. And then I'm going to use a glue dot to first stick it on. And then I'm going to color it with a marker. Just any permanent marker will do, but a brush tip marker will color the plastic a lot better. And that's all there is to it. Very easy, fun shaker card to make. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!